All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I have another very, very special treat for you today. We are at Phil Gasowitz's beautiful HO scale layout, uh, affectionately called Philville uh, by Phil. Although there's a story behind that that maybe we'll get out of Phil as we go around. So I'm um, here with Phil. I'm um, going to let him introduce himself, just give a real little bit of background into the layout. And as usual, we'll start uh, one in the layout, kind of walk around, have Phil explain the layout to us point out some of the uh, interesting unique features and then uh, most likely get a train or two running and then I'll go back get some detailed pictures uh, videos of the trains running through the scenery it's beautiful the whole thing's scenic absolutely gorgeous layout so with that Phil give us a little bit of background on yourself and the layout hey Rod first thanks for coming make, uh, make taking the trip uh, from Erie this morning I really <laughs> appreciate that uh, so welcome to Philville <laughs> and I'll tell you why it's called that uh, when we lived in an old house in Grove City and I had a very small layout, my family used to tease me and, and called it Philville uh, when I would go and work on it. And I think they were pleasantly surprised when I adopted that name and it has been known as Philville ever since. And, and of course now the original layout was five by seven feet. And now that we moved here, uh, this layout is about 25 feet wide at the furthest points and about 30 feet long. And so it's a vast difference from what it used to be, but uh, here it is. This, uh, this whole operation here is actually two different layouts uh, on two different, la uh, two different levels. On top here, we have a layout that is uh, from about the 19, early 1900s to about 1935. All the engines, the buildings, the automobiles, etc., are, are from that era. And then down below, we have uh, from, say, the 1930s steam through uh, mid, the mid-1950s. And there it stops. And so... Um, I, I've spent probably about 10 years working on this layout and just a few, uh, I guess just a few numbers for you. Uh, I've used all Atlas uh, track, uh, maybe, a, maybe another uh, uh, for microengineering, maybe some more track mm -hmm. that way. Then I've also uh, used both Atlas and, and Pico switches. And uh, there are about 65 turnouts on the layout. Uh, some are operated by the traditional Atlas uh, switch, and then others are operated uh, from the Digitrax um, DCC controller. And uh, so uh, this is not a simple operation. I think I said it, uh, it took me about 10 years to uh, build from start to finish and just put the finishing touches on it about three or four weeks ago. Uh, but I should say, I think every model railroader knows that a project like this is never finished. You go to a show and you see this or that detail <laughs> and uh, you want to pick it up because you know it's going to add something or you read about a technique that somebody's used very successfully and I'll give you one example of that. And so, uh, Rob, if you want to shift your camera over here, yep. this is so easy and inexpensive. I just got a ball of cotton and I made, I made smoke coming out of the chimneys for most of the buildings on the layout. Some are painted a dark gray or sprayed a dark gray because they're from more of an industrial chimney and others are just uh, plain white because it's some, some guy's house. So, you know, this mm. is all happening in around September of any given year, maybe a chilly day, people have turned their furnaces on or have a fire going. So that's why we have the smoke coming out of the chimneys. Yeah, it's, a, it's but, but that beautiful. But yeah. that little, very inexpensive uh, piece, to me anyway, added a lot of realism mm -hmm. uh, to the entire layout. Beautiful. And it took me about 45 minutes to do it. Right, it's easy, it's quick to do, and it makes a big impact. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, thank you very much, Phil, and again, thanks for 
uh, having myself and my traveling companion Bill show off with me again. What we'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and pause and we'll set up, we'll figure out where the best place is to start and we'll go around the layout, show you the, uh, the layout from one end or from start to finish, however uh, makes the most sense. And then uh, hopefully see some trains running. So okay. we'll be right back, folks. Okay, so here we are. So we're going to go ahead and start here uh, at what looks kind of maybe to be a, a freight yard, a marshalling yard here. So, so go ahead, Phil. Take us away. Where are we at here? All right, so here we are uh, in a marshalling yard. Nice phrase to use. Uh, this is Atlas Track. A lot of woodland scenics, uh, scenery products at play here but also uh, Woodland Scenics uh, Just Plug Lighting and you can see several examples of that and maybe later we'll turn the lights down a little bit and Ooh, rock yeah, and yeah. do some shots that give you more of that effect. Uh, so I, I don't think I mentioned that because I grew up in western New York and lived in Ohio um, my favorite railroads are the New York Central and Pennsylvania but I also have a fair amount of nickel plate. There you go, because, yeah. <laughs> because, because when I lived in northern Ohio, about a quarter mile behind the house was a nickel plate line, and we used to hear that train all the time. Nice, but the, yep. But I also have Bessemer and Lake Erie, because uh, we lived in Grove City, and, and by coincidence, uh, a, a railroad line ran right behind the house, maybe about a quarter of a mile or so. So I love living where you can hear that whistle blow. Oh yeah, nice. And so that's what we have here. We have, uh, you see mostly coal, iron ore, and that would, be, that would be where we are, somewhere probably in western Pennsylvania. Okay. This, uh, this model railroad is not modeled after any particular place. Uh, it is total freelance. It is total imagination. Nice. And for for all of um, uh, for a lot of the ideas that you see here, uh, I have really uh, not that I'm doing any product advertising here, but I really <laughs> am grateful uh, to people like Walters and uh, Woodland Scenics and Scenic Scenic Express because in the last ten years they have come out with products that have made it possible for guys like me to take a dream, a simple layout, and put some reality to it. And I'll give you a good example. Until Woodland Scenics came out with the Just Plug lighting systems that are all LED mm -hmm. and almost to scale, if not to scale, you can do that now. You can put that. They're easy to assemble. They're easy to put in. And they look real if yep. you take the time to do it. Before that, what did we have? We had we had somebody doing LED products. Miniatronics used to have great stuff, mm -hmm. but a lot of it was incandescent, and so oh, yeah. no matter where you put it, you were going to have to deal with the heat and the power it took to make it run. Right. So almost everything you see on Philville here is LED. Uh, sure, there are some uh, there are some incandescent lights in some of the older engines. Uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you I have about 50 engines. Uh, they're all DCC equipped over the last 25 years or so. Uh, probably most of them are also sound equipped, mm -hmm. which can drive you crazy if you listen to them for too long. But number eight is a mute button on your digit track right. controller. Uh, <laughs> yep, so yep, yep. Uh, you wish you had that mute button in other circumstances in life, but not always. Not always. It'd be nice to have the F8 around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So here we are, uh, as you walk around the layout, you'll see that uh, a number of buildings are really named after friends of ours, my, my wife and myself. Mm -hmm. uh, good friends, we honor them, we tease them, uh, but they are, uh, they are what they are. Yep. So for example, if I can point this out, yep. uh, here we have, this yep. is my cousin, Joe Kornofsky from move Buffalo, up. New York. Yep. And Joe uh, worked for a timing devices company his whole career. He is now retired. So there it is, Koronofsky Timing Devices, and it's really to honor him. Nice. And the one thing you'll notice as we're walking around, Phil's done a beautiful job of 
weathering and and subduing actually everything it all blends together beautifully it really looks good you come down and you think I I'm back in the mid 1950s because it looks good it's not totally dirty and grungy but it just looks I, I gotta say it just looks good it looks right it feels right so hats off to Phil very very well done you know Rob uh, thank you for saying that uh, somebody asked me recently if I had any advice to give to mm -hmm. our railroaders mm -hmm. in thinking about coloring and scenic design and the piece of advice I, I would have is that you should always remember you're in scale at 1 to 87 feet, you're usually a couple of hundred feet above what you're looking at. And just as you can look out the window of an airplane landing at an airport and see what's down below the residences, there are no bright, 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 bright colors. Right. It's all tamped down, it's all a bit muted, and because of that, it looks a, a bit more realistic. Have I totally succeeded everywhere here? Uh, probably not. But um, in most cases, I succeeded enough to make myself happy. And yep. so not, for a hobby like this, really, that, that is what counts. Biggest thing is being happy with your, yep, yep. No, it looks great, Phil. It really does. So, All right, we're going to a quick pause, and we're going to move around the, uh, the edge of the layout here and continue the tour. Okay, great. And All right, hey, Rob. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, because I have so many engines by so many different manufacturers. Mm. Uh, some years ago, I decided there was no way, even as a young man or an old man, I could remember how everybody arranged their individual uh, yeah. controls. Yep. 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 So I came up with a card that I make for every engine that I own. That's and nice. Yeah. Can you, can you see that? Yep. There? I should be able to see that if I can. Let me adjust the. So on there it has the address number, what the piece of equipment is, what the railroad is, um, who, who made the product, and then what are all the controls are. Yep. The key point that you want to know always is uh, what's the startup sequence right. going to be yep. and yep. the shutdown. And so if I'm going to run an engine, I pull, I pull a card out of the pocket where the engine is parked then I have some sense of what I'm supposed to do. That's nice. That's very smart. Yep. Because I often, you know, I, I'm tending to try to stay with TCS decoders. Yeah. But sometimes, you, you know, you, you don't want to change it. And you've got tsunamis or you've got ESUs, and you're right. And if you have a, a Broadway Limited, you know, these are often different. And heaven forbid you get a European locomotive. Oh, right. Oh, my gosh. It's to, so this is, this, this is smart. Very smart. And so I might I, have to do this myself. That's now good that idea. you mentioned that, I, I think I have mostly soundtracks, but mm -hmm. I think I have a couple of TCS on here, uh, and then every, somebody's OEM stuff. So you, you right. never know. What you never know doing. exactly. Yep. Yep. It, it, it's like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. And you never so know. <laughs> one way to be a little prepared for that. Yep. Yep. And less frustrated when you're running something like this, because, mm -hmm. and I don't think I said this. This is really a one-man band here. Right. Uh, I, I live too many miles away from a good railroad club, so I don't go there and nobody comes up here. So mm, that's a shame. Is, this has been that's my one-man yeah. thing for 10 years. Yeah. And I've loved every minute of it, and in fact, that's one reason why I do love the hobby. I can do this alone. You, I right. can come down here. Uh, what I usually do is I, I put on some music and myself uh -huh. stick it in my pocket. It follows me around. Yep, yep. And every model railroader knows this. You say to yourself, I have 15 minutes, I'm going to go downstairs and do this and do that. And 10 hours later, right. you, you come up for air and your wife says, Where were you? Where were you? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. that's what this is. So nice. now we come yep. around the corner yep. and we have more of the yard and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of some businesses here, a few spurs where uh, we can do some operations if we need to. And here you're also seeing some, some more uh, of the upper level. On the background uh, there, what you're looking at, the blue, uh, I think I bought this at either 84 lumber, mm -hmm. and these are two foot by 50 foot strips of aluminum fascia. 
I, and there are two sets of them here. Okay. So they go around, and I went around and just painted the blue. I watched a video on Google how to paint clouds. Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So did my clouds, and then I needed to have some background, uh, so it, it gave a little greater depth to the scene, and and figured out how I was going to paint that. The one thing we we didn't show, and if you swing your camera around, mm -hmm. I tr I tried this uh, one time, but decided it was way too much work. Over above that uh, bridge there, uh, Rob. Over here on this side. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That looks pretty good, um, yeah. but here's what I wound up doing. Every time my wife and I would travel and we'd stop at a restaurant on the interstate, <laughs> I would take pictures of the tree lines. Okay. Then I'd yeah. come home and print those, Yeah, yeah. then cut them out, make several copies, and then maybe lay them flat, glue a little bit of stuff on it to make it give, to give it some depth, yep. then slapped it on the board there, and then gave it another tree line. And even though that's very effective, I did not have the rest of my lifetime to do that. Okay. <laughs> and so that is the one and only place where I did it. And then I decided to paint the rest and just figure it out I see. Yeah. how I yep. could go from yep. one to the other and it wouldn't look quite so odd. Looks good. Yeah, it looks good. But that's yeah. another thing I love about this hobby. You learn as you go. Oh, you sure do. And if you yep. don't find a good article or a video, you just figure it out, and that's the fun of it. And 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 if you don't like scenery painting, okay, put that aside. Go weather a, a car. Mm -hmm. If you don't like that this week, then put that aside and do a building. And uh, and and I think you find a lot of satisfaction. There's always something to do. Always something yep. to do. Yep. And a lot of these buildings are really kit bashed, mm -hmm. or uh, DPM has these kits where you. You know, buy the 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 certain era brick window and yeah. bank siding. Yep. Yep. And American uh, Tool and Die Company there is a great example of that. Uh, same with uh, Trump Transfer. Those are all ki uh, pieces from uh, other kits that I put together uh, to have some fun. Nice. Okay. Well, we might as well continue right around here. I'm just going to pick up the tripod, folks. So. Stand by and just kind of walk I'm going over this. To switch one. places if yep. you want to catch that river and the bridge. Yeah, we're going to come over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Look at that. So, nice. what we're looking at now is a bridge uh, going across some unnamed river. And, <laughs> uh, and that is part of the upper deck uh, railroad mm -hmm. going from the town of Upton to Longbridge. And that bridge, by the way, uh, was given to me by a, 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 an old dentist who was getting out of the hobby. He was well in his 80s. Yeah. He had some spare stuff, and I was over at his house one day, and he said, here, take this. Wow. And so I just had it cut and molded a little bit, and I found a good place of honor for, nice. for yeah. his gift to me. Yeah. And this was another great opportunity to do some experimental work with realistic woodland scenics realistic water so of course this takes several layers to pour and wait but it's worth it and then you come along with a paintbrush of tight ti with titanium white acrylic paint mm -hmm. and you do a little mm -hmm. dabbling here and there and uh and and with a little bit of patience you wind up with a pretty nice effect beautiful very nice yeah Oh, the digit tracks there in the scenery. Oh yeah, yeah. That was not a that was not a good piece of planning on my part. That's cool. And what I need to do, I think, is I need to make some some bushes with a cover or something and just okay, put it over yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple of bill oversized a billboard, billboard or something, right, right. Yeah, slap that yep. on there. So yeah, that's that. That does ruin the scene. It's hard to take a nice shot of the boats here and the that's people coming idea. up the stairs because then you're looking at these that's surreal right controls. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, and that's another thing. If you can laugh at yourself, you can you can have good fun. You have to. Yeah. With this railroad. It's a, it, it, it's it gets too serious. It's like a job. Oh yeah. And we don't want another job. Yeah. I have a job. You know. Yeah, I don't need right. another job. So. All right. So this is just another little industrial area here. A little industrial area, and of course, large cities are pocketed with with these kinds 
of little islets of commercial mm -hmm. and they're usually close by uh, factories because here we have the Blue Ribbon Pie Company <laughs> whose motto is have we got crust and then <laughs> Red Wing Milling and the Whitewater Brewing Company so what would you have there with people going back and forth to work you'd always have a gas station yep always going to have a coffee shop some little sidebar um, company making pallets uh, to support the other firms. The businesses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have a pool hall, of course. And at the pool hall, there's a Friday night fight. Oh, boy. And the cops are there. And <laughs> it is not true that the cop standing in front of the police car has a donut in his hand. That is just not true. And so you also have a tattoo parlor and all the rest. But that is the kind of stuff that you would see yeah, yeah. around one of these uh, commercial islands of, um, of business enterprise. Nice. Very well detailed. Thank really. you. So it's just, you just feel like you're there. Like, it's one of those layouts where I'd love to shrink myself to HO scale and just be able to walk around yeah. and just see what's there. It's, it's Thank really you. Thank very you well done. Over here we have the s &J Smith School Supplies. And that's because when we lived in Grove City, uh, we had wonderful neighbors, uh, Steve and Jan Smith, both educators in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, they're in the school supply business. And so I've honored them uh, with the building of their own. The same thing with Clancy Brothers uh, Lumber Company up above. Good friend of mine I've known for almost 50 years. Nice. Yeah. And everywhere you look, you see other examples mm -hmm. of... Woodland Scenics Just Plug. Yeah, uh, it's um, very well. Just yep. Plug yep. products. And Rob, I don't know if you can lean far enough over to see the fish in the pond there. What I'm going to try to do is um, when I come around off tripod, I'll call it, just yeah. so I can get in a little bit closer. Maybe even with my cell phone. I also have a little GoPro that I might be able to reach in. And, oh, good. Yeah, because he's, what Phil did was down here, he's got a stream with a fisherman. But he actually have, has fish painted in, in the water, and it, it looks incredible. It looks great. So I'm gonna try. I'll try to get that later on when I come back around. Because here on the tripod, I, I'm not gonna try and, and damage Phil's beautiful layout. But we'll, we'll get that later on. All right. So we'll continue on over here. So as, the, as long as you're here, right here in this corner. Yeah. Yep. Stay right where you are. Yep. Let me flip this on. I think the power's on. So I, I tell the young, the young kids who visit with their parents, uh -huh. and that is a rule of mine, by the way, because this is chest high. No little kids come here, mm -hmm. even teenagers. I want another adult. Well, there, it all makes sense. Yep. But I tell yep. the kids who are younger and don't know any better that this is the cheeseburger factory where <laughs> all the McDonald's cheeseburgers are made, and then they're sent out to the various places so they can have their treats. Yep, yep. Nice. Uh, you can only listen to the sound car for a few minutes. For a little while until so I, I hear you. Yep, enough yep, yep. is enough. That's why it's on a switch. That's yep. right. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So, of course, here, um, here's another one that you might focus on. Mm -hmm. Because, Rob, I know you did a great video uh, for Scott Jacobs Model Railroad that you have online at YouTube. And he and I have become friends. I hope we're friends. And um, so I gave him his own building. He had been, a, he's a retired oh, engineer. Oh, Scott Woods. Scott Woods. Scott Woods, yes. A retired yes. engineer. From Beautiful Chicago layout. Bridge yes. Iron. Yep. And so I yep. decided to honor him with a building. Nice. Close to Corleone yep. Olive Oil Company, <laughs> where all sorts of things happen. Uh, if you can lean your camera over, you'll see there's a fire truck and an ambulance because, of course, a dead body or two uh -oh. has been found <laughs> near Corleone Olive Oil, Olive Oil. And why are we surprised? Nice. <laughs> I love the stories. It, it, it's just, it makes it so personal. I gotta ask you, so what's this, let me get back, That's, that looks really, really, that, that's a beautiful model. There's another model. example of DPM, Design yep. Preservation Model, spare parts, Yep. Uh, and a little creativity. And that's why I know I'm no different than any other model railroader, I throw nothing away. So <laughs> exactly. I went to my junk pile yep. and said, okay, if there was a burned out building, what would that look like? So these are odd pieces of balsa here, uh, cracked windows, you know, plastic cracked windows. 
you see the sign here that says the road is a dead end. Yo, yeah, sure and is. And Scott yep. Woods has taken advantage of that by placing all of his stuff in the middle <laughs> of the road. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that is a nice looking is. building. Yeah. And now you're coming to the river, uh, and yep. I don't remember what I call this, but I made this river in three or four pieces, and it was the very last thing I did to finish the layout. Ah, okay. And later on, when we when we turn the lights down mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. take some shots uh, without my voice to distract people, <laughs> I hope you'll get a shot coming across there, looking across the river at the the Bait and Fish Companies because it, okay. it does okay. have a very realistic look. You get the glow on the river of the lights. Oh yes, yeah, so definitely. Okay. okay, we'll do that. Yep, definitely. So here we see what we are looking at now is a part of town that a lot of people would say is the other side of town. <laughs> These are where uh, you can see the loan, the, the loan company, you can see the tenement uh, buildings down there, the Army Navy surplus store, the kinds of buildings and businesses that would be in the part of town where people are struggling. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and life hasn't been so good for them. Yep. And of course, there are always predatory businesses that come along to take their money, like Dolly's Bar and Grill down there. Um, but they're everywhere, right next to the prosperous downtown. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. am making a bit of a social statement here, yeah. not a political one. <laughs> right, right. Because right next to that is this beautiful hotel, and people are looking over the edge. Down, down ah, yes. into the neighborhoods Got that it. Yep. aren't so yep. good. And they're probably feeling pretty good about themselves yep. Yep. For, for having a life better than Very subtle, else. but now, yeah, yeah. But, yep. but there it is. <laughs> yeah. Now here, once again, we have some of these other kinds of business, another part of the downtown mm -hmm. that I had a lot of fun with because, again, uh, you have Woodland Scenics uh, making these vehicles with the headlights and taillights oh, yeah, yeah. that light yep. up so beautifully. Yep. And these are all Bow Mills kits or something, companies of, of that kind. Mm -hmm. They make beautiful stuff. And with a little bit of patience, you can really turn out a, a nice kit that goes along with it. And then there are a lot of scratch built things like Abraham's Antiquities. And so now that we're looking at downtown, uh, most model railroaders will recognize uh, quite a few commercial buildings. Union Station there has been kit bashed to make uh, a, to fit a smaller footprint, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. never to waste things. <laughs> I took the extra pieces from Union Station and I made the Federal Reserve. Oh, back there. Yeah, I see it back, back there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. And there are several, several <laughs> examples of that here just because you've got good stuff. You don't want to waste it. Right, yeah. And so I can zoom back to so the church. Another good example of that, that hotel there is actually supposed to be about 13 stories. Oh, wow. But wow. I thought that the scale was way too high mm. for this layout. It would overpower it. Right. Yeah. So I yep. took three or four floors out of there. Okay. And I used the spare parts to make that apartment building <clears throat> just behind the A&P company and the Federal Reserve Bank. And that made, that gave me an extra building free. Yeah, yep, clever. And so here we here we are in downtown, and downtown Philville, I guess we could call yeah, it. Yeah, this is Philville. Okay. Downtown Philville. Yep. And uh, a lot of these are commercial buildings, a lot of these are scratch built, and there are a lot of places here where I honor my family and friends, and, uh, and, am, and am happy to do so. So, good friends of ours are Pat and Charlie Marone, who live in, and her handle is, uh, her email is Patty Pasta, uh, huh, because okay. she's an outstanding cook, and we enjoy her cooking uh, quite often. Uh, we have Pearlman's Gems, a friend of mine who, who has, who is retired now, but run a jewelry business for mm -hmm. many years. Uh, Tom and Tim McNichol. Uh, an artist, a well-known artist in this area, Tom McNichol, and his brother uh, Tim, who's a prominent attorney. So I honor them and respect them. Mm -hmm. My son's wedding was at Lamont in Pittsburgh, and so 
the building down the street, you can almost see the Lamont title. It's not the same as the real Lamont that beautifully overlooks the Ohio River, but it was the only way I could get it in there. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Well done, yeah. My son-in-law is into sports, and so we have uh, Teeman and Son Sporting Goods there mm -hmm. in the background. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. all around, uh, I've tried to, to do some things. Another good friend of ours is a Dr. Tay uh, from Newcastle. He delivered 7,000 babies, he says, in the Newcastle area over wow. his career. Good for and him. And so we have Tay's Baby Land. <laughs> <laughs> And no, I, wait, where's Tay's? I'm gonna, I'm it's all the way in the back. See, in the back wall? Ba oh, Babyland. Way back here. Okay, yeah. let me go back. That's awesome. There should be a number up there. 7,000 babies and counting. <laughs> well, not in counting. He's retired. He's retired now? now? Okay. Nice. What I, <laughs> what I didn't really point out much is uh, my effort at having a downtown main train station and how in my imagination that might look. Mm -hmm. So here we have mostly Pennsylvania Railroad but this is a station also used by the New York Central. And well, it's a Union it's Station. It's yep. a Union yep. Station yep. and it's got four tracks. In the background there you can see an entrance to the subway so oh, yeah. people yeah. can get to yep. it. And in a couple of places downtown, you can actually see where people can get to the subway. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see it over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see and I can get. Yeah. Uh, right in front of the subway entrance down below there, it's pretty far away, but you can see the guy has a little shoe shine business, of course, catching all the people who need that Perfect. Kind of That's work. exactly what would be there. Yeah. And yeah. because this is in the 50s, you're going to see uh, in the foreground here behind Pennsylvania 8304 a number of American soldiers. Ah. Possibly from the Korean War, they're on leave, mm -hmm. they're coming home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to carry through that theme. Now the one thing, Phil, we need to mention, because I see it there in the back, and you let me just move a little bit over here. You see the Gasowich Publishing Company there, and the one thing that Phil told us is he's actually an author as well, correct? Yes, and, and thanks, thanks for mentioning that. In, in my retirement, uh, I've had maybe a couple of obsessions besides grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of them is why you're here, this model railroad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, the other one is I, I've written four novels, novels, the fourth one of which has just come out. Wow, uh, that's It's cool. a crime th thriller occurring in Grove City, Pennsylvania. Really? Uh, but, the, but the other reason I, I'm proud to say Gazwood's publishing, because right near there you're going to see a little building called Becca's Books. Yep. Uh, my daughter, who has a Ph.D. in child literacy and has published her own book on mm. Amazon, it's quite successful. Uh, it's about uh, kindergartners or pre-kindergartners, how to make kids successful through play. Oh, and interesting. It's, okay, it's, it's yeah. a lot of a lot of activities uh, parents can do with their kids mm -hmm. while they're two, three, four years old, getting them ready for school, and helping them with their uh, with their social and mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Um, motor skills. Nice, excellent. And then, of Good course, here my son, who's I believe uh, kept his up his hobby in trains, is Robville. <laughs> And, good uh, name, good name. Good name, yes. And, and so uh, I wanted to honor each of them in their own way with their own buildings. Nice. And of course, my son or my daughter might say it's not fair because Rob's building is taller than her building. But <laughs> there's only so much yeah, I It is, do right, there. right, right. <laughs> the love's the same. It, it's the it's love all the same. the same. Yep, yep, okay. All along the foreground here, these are some of my favorites. And like a lot of model railroaders, I try to put my best buildings closer to oh, the yeah, front. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. The not-so-great stuff to the back. <laughs> uh, and these, I think, are almost all bar mills. Or okay. uh, is it JJL Innovative? or JL Innovative, yeah, yep, yep. These two companies, that, and there are others out there, they put out such great stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that allows you uh, to kick bash a little bit. And, and again, using Woodland Scenics to light and to give some life to them. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. 
And it looks like we're coming to another fairly industrial area here. Of course, we right. have. Um, Let me sneak in close here and get it. We have Hoffa cement, and most people get that uh, reference, I think. <laughs> yep. Between them and the Carleones, yeah, I think yeah, you've got to right. cover it. Yeah, right. We have to pay tribute. <laughs> and somebody, of course, sells, and I think it might have been uh, Miniatronics sells, a little thing that gives you the effect of uh, soldering and welding here. The arc welder in there? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Shop. Yep. So this yep. is, by all appearances, a uh, caboose repair shop. Okay. And it's non-discriminatory, so we have <laughs> Esmer Lake Erie, Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, um, the Pennsylvania Railroad, and New York Central. Very nice. One of my more recent acquisitions, if you can focus down in here, mm -hmm. is, and you can see this run later if you're interested, and this is Philville, <laughs> a little engine the little engine that could, but what, what yeah. I really love about this engine <laughs> is that it does have lights and it has a capacitor in it. Does it really? So okay. I think Broadway Limited puts this out. Oh, okay. okay. And this little guy runs across anything <laughs> and pulls four or five cars. Okay, no yeah. difficult. Yep. I mean, it is one of the coolest little things that has come out in the last 10 years. <laughs> nice. And as you come along here, I don't think I've mentioned this, but there are five or six different hatches uh, on this mm. model railroad, so mm -hmm. I can get to where I need to get. Yep. And there's a fair amount of trackage that is behind some scenery, and this is a pretty good example. I won't pull it out, but I'll tell you where all this is. Mm -hmm. From here to here is a hatch I can lift out okay. and put back. Mm -hmm. so that I can get down to the track below if I really need to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here we have, this is all Woodland Scenics um, shaper paper. And of oh, yeah. course, yep. a, lot yep. of their, uh, a lot of their foliage that goes in here. Mm -hmm. These are cast rocks that I just cut to size and out of, uh, in my wood shop, just made these, uh, these supporting buttresses here. Mm -hmm. Made them look mm -hmm. like cement. Yep. Nice. Uh, yep. Kind of a typical thing. And as we come along here, this is this one and this one, maybe two of three pre builts that I bought oh, okay. for this model railroad. Mm -hmm. Everything else is from a kit or a scratch built. This entire, this entire Silverman's Fine Tobaccos there with Wish Industries, that is all kit bashed, extra parts junk on the table. Okay, yep, but, uh, yep. Perfect, Enjoy. yeah, it looks good, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And even the, the pre-built ones, they, they blend in beautifully. Well, I... You know, you'd never know, rain. unless, if you didn't point it out... You change you things, you, uh, you, you do some weathering on them, you mm -hmm. add a touch or two, yep. and, and it does yep. make a huge difference. Yep. Very well done. And this uh, gondola, the wood really conceals the fact that this is a power car, so hmm. these are two wired together. Okay. So that this guy, which is this guy, is probably 25 years old, or mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. and it has sound. So <laughs> it has power and sound underneath the wood. Oh, okay. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy also does not have to struggle too much across a turnout if my tracks are clean. Um, and I have had to do that with a number of engines, older engines, sure. with a shorter wheelbase. Right. Uh, the short ones are tough. By yep. Just, yep. just adding a power car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clever. And as you come along further, everybody has their labor problems. And <laughs> these people are on strike for, uh -oh. at the Vanadium Corporation, for, okay. more, for more money or benefits. Yep. And of course, the police are here, and they're being very careful to make sure. We're just keeping an eye on things. We don't have management yeah. and labor getting too much. Right, finish. right, yeah. Then we have here a couple of old time railroaders, and they're at several junctions here. There are several switches they have to be watching, and when they have nothing else to do, they're playing a game of checkers to pass the time. Okay. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> awesome. And as we come around to this corner, Rob, uh, this is worth mentioning only because it is the very first scenicing I've I've ever done mm -hmm, in my mm -hmm. road and yep. did a lot of experimenting. I used a lot of commercially available rocks. Um, all of this is is cardboard and plaster plaster so plaster uh, sheets. Yep. And uh, although I thought this was a very successful way of doing it. When when Woodland Scenics came out with shaper paper a little bit later, uh, I found it to be a, a much easier, a lot easier, and less oh, yeah. messy way of putting <clears throat> things together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yep. and uh, so I've I've used it almost exclusively on the rest of the railroad. So here we have we're coming around to where some of these businesses have to have to get their resources and their ore. And that is at the uh, New River Mining Company. That mm -hmm. is a bit of a kit bashed Walther's kit okay. yep. from several years ago. And there's another hatch right here so that I can lift this up and uh, get to some of the scenery if I need to. Mm -hmm. I mentioned to you when we were talking earlier that this is a, an, an exercise in forced perspective. Yeah, I want to go and show that. At yeah. the beginning, yeah. where, where you're looking at through Rob's lens at these vehicles, this scenery, this building, all HO scale. This yellow truck that I believe you can see yep. coming down is HO scale. But then as the road goes up and around, that is N scale. So this is only eight feet deep, but I've done my best anyway to make it look a little deeper. Looks good. Yep. So the trees yep. are bigger here, they're smaller here. So I'll zoom back and you can really see that very well. Even in, I hope it comes out on the video because even I'm looking through the viewfinder and it, it looks, you can, it looks like that's a lot farther away. Yeah, it looks very, very well. Yep. This yep, particular good. scene here, I don't know if you want to get to this or you can get to it. Um, yeah, I think I here. just watched the, the film, A River run, Runs Through It. <laughs> okay. And so looking up this way and here you'll see a couple of fishermen and this is not exactly Montana, um, but it could be a lot of places in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 Very nice. And I think where we live here in Pennsylvania the, it, it is, I'm sure everybody says this about where they live, but yeah. I happen to think this is just a beautiful place to live because mm -hmm. you get all of this. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So now I assume here, let me just kind of pan back this way, because I hear some stuff growling away. On, is that kind of like a hidden staging area there? Yes, I okay. can. Uh, let me step over your tripod, right. and then we yep. can also make our way around to the last. Well, that's right. There's more to see, folks. Yep. Yeah. So underneath here, I have three or four tracks. Okay. And so I can, using Atlas controllers, I can turn these, turn the tracks on and off to keep the power drain low. Okay. But yep. I yep. keep a lot of extra trains down there mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and trade them out from time to time just to have to, a little bit more fun running the railroad. Yep. And coming around here to this side, maybe you can get a good view of going up the street here. And I'll move this train just a little bit. You can see the hobos. <laughs> but the church down here is interesting. Just because I wanted to respect all denominations, mm -hmm. that church, I believe, was a Bar Mills model they put out many years ago. And it is an accurate replica of a Covenant Methodist Church from Southern California. Okay. So accurate, in fact, that the that the that the as, uh, um, the uh, plastic stained glass windows inside are very realistic. Oh, you could take that okay. church out and let you see it through the light. You would think you were in a beautiful sanctuary. Wow, nice. But just to keep everybody happy. Yep. Uh, that is a Catholic wedding. Oh. On the front steps of that okay. church. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. And in fact, um, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this on camera, but when my son-in-law was dating my daughter, 
and I brought him down here to show him the railroad. And yeah. I pointed this out, and I said, see that wedding? Give you any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the town of Upton, the upper deck of the railroad. Yeah. And here you can see in these old buildings the uh, the, uh, the cotton smoke coming out uh, yeah, yep, does, yep. Does, does show to good effect. And see the red building there against the backdrop? Uh, that is the New York Central building. You'll see the other half of that building on the other side. Okay. I just cut it at a diagonal in effect uh -huh. and got two buildings out of it. Yeah, clever. And here's my feeble attempt at a falls. Feeble attempt. Feeble Falls. Feeble Falls. <laughs> Actually, that station over there uh, is called Crooked Falls. Oops, sorry, folks. And you can look right down and see Crooked Falls. Yep. yep. And the reason it's named Crooked Falls is, of course, because I somehow couldn't quite get this falls. <laughs> couldn't get this the way it should. Okay. You right. used feeble, and here's a feeble attempt at my humor. <laughs> So here we have this roaring, raging river, yep. and there's a guy in a bass boat right here at the edge. Yeah. And he realizes, oh my god, I'm going off the layout. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got his arms up, he's probably what do I do his now? heart yeah, what yeah. do I do now? <laughs> nice. Okay, let's move so if you come along here, you'll yep. see the upper end of that river going down to the falls. Yep. And yep. maybe a nice shot looking up the street where it goes off into the mountains. Beautiful, yep. I'm going to manually uncouple this car here. Okay. So that you can see... I'm going to bring the tripod a little bit higher here. Try to keep it. Up. This is an old, old oh. Tyco model station that I've reused and repurposed. I recognize that. Yeah. And yeah. with a little bit of lighting, some weathering, and some extra scenery, it comes to life. Nice. And here's the other half of the New York Central building. Oh, yeah. Only it's another, it's another business entirely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of people here saying goodbye. This is probably around 1930 or so. Uh, maybe a little earlier, Pennsylvania Railroad's K-4 was beautifully decorated and painted. Very nice. Yeah. I think there's more. <laughs> and I, I, like, I do like the scene because you can look up this way, going up the street, there's an older guy riding his bicycle. Let me get a little bit down here. Yep, nice. <laughs> and along the top here, this is the back side of the Upton to Long Bridge Railroad. Yeah, going yeah. along, all along the top here. Okay. Down below, yeah coming out of the hidden storage area. Here's another suburban station, just like you saw at Crooked Falls. Yeah. And you can imagine this. Uh, this is, this is, there's a town over here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. here's the station. So here are, uh, in, there's a, I think that looks like a 55 or a 56 Ford. Here they are, the wives are, are coming to the station to pick their husbands up at the end of the work day. Okay, yep. Beautiful. And then this comes around to another another trestle bridge and a waterfall and a very big thunderstorm. Yeah, yeah. And then going into a couple of tunnels on two levels mm -hmm. and three of them, and they all go around to the other side. Okay, gotcha. Yep, yep. Nice. And that is probably a fairly good tour. Beautiful. Yep. A walking tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phil. Phil. <laughs> I love that name. Let's get a pan back this way a little bit. Mm 
you can see that I, I, I probably put Train World, my favorite supplier, <laughs> I, I reduced their stock of, of, of bushes of three different colors on many occasions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to get this looking right. Yeah. Nice. And every time I did it, I put what I thought was enough. Mm -hmm. Then I'd come back two days later and add more. <laughs> and then my son comes to visit and he said, that's not nearly enough. Okay. And so I'd have to put even more. You can always add more. You can always it, add more. Yeah, you can always just yep. to make it look yep. realistic. And you know yep. what I, you know what I used that was that really worked well. Um, I, I can't tell you the exact name of the company, but if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot mm -hmm. and you're looking in the caulk aisle, yeah, you'll see this stuff that is made and it says Alex on it. It's partly silicone, mm -hmm. but it's really mm -hmm. a water-based mm -hmm. caulk okay. that goes on white, dries clear. Mm. I probably use 20 or 30 tubes of that. <laughs> yeah. So I would just put daubs of that on there and okay. stick the bushes and right on and they yeah. stuck immediately. And so it really made what could have been a, a very tedious task yeah. a lot easier.
I think I put the lighting in myself. I added, um, I can't remember who came out with this, but somebody came out with lighting that had capacitors. So you won't see these lightings flickering too much. Thank you. 
those um, what, table links there. Yeah, and I was happy because these Sorry, folks. <laughs> and you know what? It was getting a lot. That has such a wide. Piece of it was getting. Oh, people. Let me. For, I'm just, just going to play it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. For a little bit. I think it'll clear the bridge. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, shoot. All right. We don't have to. I don't want to. That's <laughs> really realistic. Uh, 
That's a cool building. That's, That's the best building. burned out building I've oh, ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Now we'll see how good he is. We're going to come on this side. <laughs> Hi folks. <laughs>